So this morning let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to 7. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, does not keep a wrong of record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you that we can come into your presence. What a great joy. What an awesome privilege, Lord, that we can come and we can read your word, understand your word, and so that it can be life, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you speak to us this morning. Especially, Lord, I pray for relationships that are going through tough times. Especially, I pray for husbands and wives, Lord, where there's misunderstanding. I also pray for young people who are going to be married. Lord, may these words uh, be useful for them. Let your heaven, Holy Spirit, Lord, you speak to them and you lead them and guide them. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to start with this question. What is the greatest thing in your life? What is the greatest thing in our life? You know, or, or I can say, what is the greatest treasure in our life? What is the greatest thing? I mean... It could be so many things, you know, it could be our things that we have or the education that we have or so many things. But what are the two most important things, you know, above everything else? You know, what is the, what is the greatest treasure? You know, I always come back to this verse, you know, it always get reminded of these two verses. The first verse is Matthew chapter 13, you know, verse 44. It says that this man, you know, who's, uh, who goes, who finds a treasure and then he buries it. And then he, he goes and he sells everything that he has and he holds so that he can buy the field. You know, that's our relationship with God. That's the number one treasure. That when I find God, when I know that God wants to have a relationship with me, that he is for me, that you know, I'm ready to give up everything. I just say a big yes to God. And I say no to everything else. And what's the second, second most important treasure? Is that you know, you see in Proverbs chapter 31, we see that, you know, who can find a noble wife? You know, she's far more worth than precious jewels, you know. So, that's our spouse. You know, for husband and for a wife, it's uh, her husband. And that's the thing, you know. So, the two most important things, two most important relationships in our life. First, me and my God. And second, me and my spouse. And you and your spouse. So those are the two most important relationships that God has ordained. You know, it's not a man's creation. Marriage is not man's creation. Marriage is not your idea. Marriage is not our idea. Marriage is not society's idea. Marriage is God's idea. And so that is what we are going to see today. The great relationship that God has ordained between two people. You remember your marriage day? What happened on your marriage day? I don't think you remember most of it. But you know, one thing you remember is... You know, just before the wedding, you know, before they, you know, if, uh, Indian tradition, you tied the tali or, you know, exchange rings. You know, what happened? You held someone's hand for the first time. You know, you held the, uh, the husband held the wife's hand and the wife held the husband's hand. And in, the, in Malachi chapter 2 verse 14, it says, God was witness. I mean, God was there. God is the witness for that marriage. And so the husband and wife, they held their hand together and they said, let's live life together. And that's what was marriage. You know, you remember that day. And you keep on holding and you keep on going. Tough times, good times, tragedy, sickness, lack of money, or whatever it is, you keep on holding. And I call that is marriage. Whatever comes, you know, that is marriage. You keep on holding their hand and you walk and you keep on going. That is marriage. And so this morning we want to see about God's desire for a husband and wife. So we'll see some specific things for husbands. And we'll also see some specific things for a wife. This is God's desire. This is not our desire. This is not your parents' desire. Even though it could be. But primarily it is God's desire. It is God's desire for a husband. It's God's desire for a wife. You know, you can also call it as God's will. In the Bible if you see will, wherever the will of God, it means the desire of God. And that's what it is. And so here, everybody, you know, is involved in marriage. You know, almost. Not everybody, but almost. 
and you know uh, when you get into marriage you know everybody you know they try to make the marriage work you know for example people go to work if it's a christian family they go to church they listen to messages they read god's word they pray they fast and they do ministry and all these things and that's great it's wonderful you know it's like we i've seen many people who do this going to work providing for the family going to church praying and all these things but another important aspect which really needs god's help i cannot do it on my own i cannot be a good husband or a, we cannot be good wives you know without these things that we are going to see today so it's very very important very very important and one of the things you know that we have to remember is that you know god wants us to be better you know not just in the basic requirements of life the basic requirements is like like i said going to work going to church praying and fasting and all these things these are the things that normal christians will do but you know i've seen many families who have all these requirements they go to work go to church everything is tick 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 but there is no intimacy between husband and wife there is no understanding between husband and wife there is no love between husband and wife and i ask lord what is wrong everything they are outwardly they seem to be doing everything they give tithes they are giving offerings they are, uh, everything but uh, in the home inside the home there is big problems and you know there could be many reasons for problems you know people say like you know i have a big list you know there are uh, uh, the problems like you know not able to communicate no intimacy no trust anger fights unforgiveness husband not interested and showing very lack of interest in the marriage husband or wife could be busy with their friends or their different different hobbies there's a job stress there's addictions sometimes there's in-laws problems mother in law daughter in law father in law son in law those kind of problems and medical problems so many things and whatever could be the reason the thing is that you know god still wants us to have an amazing relationship just like we have with god okay and that's what we are going to see today and you know when we don't have god in our marriage when we don't have a godly understanding of marriage when we don't understand this is god's desire for my marriage if i don't know that you know how marriage will be you go ask your friends you know who don't know god you know they'll say hey marriage is a bondage they'll say marriage is hell they'll say people say hey marriage is useless why get married some people say marriage is torture man they'll say some people say marriage is prison you know but we don't do that we don't call like that you know why because god designed marriage he purposed in his heart and he he prepared marriage he ordained marriage and he calls it as good and what god calls as good we should not call it as evil and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters so god has a plan you know god wants us to do be better husbands and wives you know so we're going to see some things you know quickly see some things and some verses you can take note of it but you know this is god's desire for our marriage okay so let's look at them you know but the important thing like we read in first corinthians chapter 13 we saw is that you know everything is rooted in love everything is rooted in love the love for the wife from a husband and the love for a husband from a wife is rooted in love love is the foundation without love i cannot do anything i can do all these things you know i can outwardly do and be like a holy man but in my home in my heart i am not able to love my wife i am not able to love my husband and that's a very hard thing so so the thing is nobody knows how to love you know we didn't go to college to learn about love we didn't go to school to learn how to lead a family life we don't know you know mo- most of the families you know we've seen is their parents when we are growing up or some movies you know you would have watched but you know how do we do that how do we approach that you know many young people i've talked to are very scared of marriage especially girls young girls are scared of marriage they are scared like what will my husband do what kind of husband will i get who will what will he be like you know what should i do you know i'm very scared i'm seeing at all these relationships that are breaking i'm seeing these divorces that are happening in christian community and then i don't know what's going to happen to me and it's a real fear and we have to address that very common fear that young girls have and also boys have and so how do we start this how do we learn this you know so I always say approach marriage as a learning it's a learning to love it's a process of learning to love nobody knows everything about marriage you know but when you have god the first treasure the first treasure is what the kingdom of god where me and my god you know we have a relationship when we have that close relationship god's going to tell us how we can be better husbands god's going to tell us how we can be better wives 
And that's the most important thing. So the first thing, you know, we want to look at is that God's desire for a husband is the first thing is that we want to learn, which we're not good at, you know, we are not good at, you know, especially at least I was not good at, is to learn, to, communi- to listen, to communicate, and to give attention to our wives. And I'm talking only to husbands for a few minutes, and then we'll look at some things about the wife. The first thing is to listen, to communicate, and to pay attention to them. And you see the picture there, you know, the husband is doing something, wife is really kind of bored, you know, she's trying to get across something, but, you know, he's busy with some his own thing. And that's the thing. You know, many times, you know, like, you know, what happens, you know, the husband comes and uh, he's still, you know, he, he could be a boss, he could be an employee, or he could be a preacher, or he could be someone. And he approaches his wife like that. But for a wife, the husband is a husband. He could be a great collector or he could be some great man. But for a wife, she wants closeness to her husband. She wants someone who will close to her, who will listen to her, who will talk to her, who will pay attention to her. And especially as men, you know, it's very hard for us. You know, because some men, you know, they, they don't like to talk a lot. They don't like to, uh, you know, pay attention because they're so distracted with so many things. So the number one thing that we learn is that, Lord, teach me to communicate. Teach me to listen to my wife. You know, they say men's way, I mean, way to the man's heart is through his stomach, they say. But way to the woman's heart is through her ears. You know, so you listen to them. You know, you listen to them and you know you find a way. And that's the thing, dear brothers and sisters. Is that, that in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, like, we, like I put there, you know, it says, Husbands, understand your wife so that your prayers will be answered. I mean, God puts understanding of our wife with our prayers. If I don't understand my wife, if I don't know my wife, if I don't talk to my wife, how can my prayers be answered? And this is God's word. And so, dear brothers and sisters, you know, you listen to them. You ask God, Lord, help me, Lord, give me a heart that will listen to my wife, that will pay attention to her, not be distracted when she's saying something. You know, you ask her, ask God. You know, he is a present help in time of trouble. And he wants to help you, he will help you. And that's the thing, you know, whatever I'm telling here today is not something that is unachievable. It's not something like climbing Mount Everest, not at all. It is something that God wants to give you. He wants to give you the gift of listening. Gift of communication, gift of openness, and gift of giving attention to your wife. And the second thing we see is you honor her. You know, the verse says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it says, you know, you honor her as the heir of life. You honor her. You know, give her honor in your heart. You know, like, you know, many people, many men, you know, they have this mentality towards their wife, like she's their servant. Or she's there to serve him only. That she's there to do the housework and all these things. And it's completely opposite to what God says in the the word. It's completely opposite to what Jesus would say. He says, honor her. Honor her. You know, using the right words. Speaking with the right words. You know, using words that are gentle. Instead of using harsh words. You know, we we could use gentle words to want something. If you want something, you could use gentle words. Instead of saying, you better bring it. Or, you know, using it in a very gentle tone. Using a very humble tone. I mean, you could say the same thing in two different tones. And that's the thing, dear brothers and sisters. You know, is that to honor her. And it's very, very important. You know, the, the, in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11 and 28, you can see that the, the whole family is praising the woman. You know, it's like the husband praises her, it says. The husband is praising the woman, the wife. And that's the thing, dear brothers and sisters. They know that God wants us to honor our wife. I mean, you might have many reasons to not honor her. You might say many things. You know, that leads to my next point. It says no excuses. No excuses. Bible doesn't say love your wife only if she's nice to you. Love your wife only if she listens to you. Bible doesn't say love your wife if she'll agree to everything that you want her to do. No, the Bible doesn't say. It just says, love your wife. Husbands, love your wife. Just four letters. Husbands, love your wife. And that's what God's word says. And you know, 
many times you know i talk to husbands you know many times they say uh, brother you know she does like this she is like this you know she spoke she spoke to me like this she disrespected me she she said this like this i mean she went and spoke to me about this person all these things but dear brothers i mean god is comparing husband's love to this wife to god's love jesus love to human beings to us and that's the thing that you know who's the initiator of our love god started the love and he initiated the same way husbands love their wife it says in ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 it says you know husbands love your wife and that's as christ gave himself for the church so like giving yourself you know no excuses no complaints i'll still love you i'll still love you i mean how can this be possible i mean how is it even possible today how can we even love i mean that's the thing we don't naturally you know we are not able to loving we are not loving people you know i am not a loving person i have to learn i have to learn committing to god saying lord you teach me how to love my wife every time i think about her i get negative things i get angry but lord you teach me you make me into your person into a new person and i'm telling you god will do that so there's no excuses for husbands there's no excuses for fathers that you know because it's like this and it's like that no there is no excuse un- unfortunately and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters that god wants us to listen communicate honor her and and you know not give any excuses and then the fourth thing we want to see is don't control her you know some people you know they have this controlling attitude they want to control her you know when 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 you control someone when you when you crush someone you know their spirit is broken i mean they might smile outside they might walk about, walk around the house they might still do the work in the house but you know what their spirit is crushed their spirit is crushed she can't say openly anything you know i know many people you know in our family counselings we meet you know there are some wives you know who can who come and tell our tell me and my wife you know that they, they tell us that you know i can't talk openly to my husband if i say something he'll get blown up you know he'll get angry he'll get upset and he will not talk to me for 3 days do you brothers and sisters you know we cannot control and get love that is not love that is not marriage relationship that god has in mind and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters that you know you you ask this question husbands you ask is your wife able to speak freely is can she is she free to talk openly to you or is she scared that how you will react how you will respond is she scared and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters don't try to control her you know jesus said in luke chapter 22 verse 25 he says that you know you are not supposed to be like this only the gentile people they lord it over them they try to control people they try to uh, exercise authority over other people but you show leadership loving leadership that's what god says you know you show loving leadership to your wife lovingly lead her be a servant serve her and then she'll submit to you many husbands say oh she doesn't submit to me she is not respectful of me she doesn't listen to me she doesn't obey me but you know the first starting point is that loving relationship when husband loves it automatically makes it easy on the wife to to respect him to to obey him to submit to him so the husband's job is to make it easy on the wife to love him and the same way the wife's job is to easy for the husband to love her and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters that you know when we try to control you know their creativity is gone they cannot flourish you know what god wants them to do they cannot do because all their thinking is like you know i don't know what mood my husband is going to come today i don't know what is going to happen today i don't know how he's going to react today oh i'm scared you know just living in fear perfect love casts out all fear it casts out all fear and then the fifth thing is very important thing especially today's generation and today's husbands is don't hide anything don't hide anything i've seen this and it's one of the saddest thing it breaks our heart is that man wants to be in his own island he wants to live his own life he doesn't want anybody to look at what he is doing for example his money matters he might have secret habits he might have secret friends he might have secret addictions he might have struggles but he will not tell his wife he will be struggling alone or he'll be having this uh, uh, romantic relationship with another lady or you know having this uh, affairs with you know p- people you know through the phone 
through messaging apps exchanging pictures exchanging needless talks you know he probably is more spending more time with other women than with his own wife you know how many times you've seen hundreds of examples hundreds of examples and you know why but you know what god calls it you know in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 it says you know god brought eve to adam so that he can have a helper helper someone who will be there to help him and also in malachi chapter uh, 2 verse 14 it says a companion companion who's a companion someone who's there to help me and that's the thing many husbands miss this point you know where what they do they don't share their struggles to their wife you know this week you know i had a little bit of struggle over some things so uh, i was struggling that night and then i went to bed and i woke up in the morning just uh, and god told me just share it to your wife and i went and sh- share to her and she we spoke we both spoke about it for 15 20 minutes and then it was and then was she was able to pray for me and she was able to pray with me and then you know it was so much better instead of keeping it in my heart you know keeping it and struggling and and worrying about it and anxious about it you know god has placed a angel right there who's your wife and you can talk to her share to her she's more than happy just imagine if a husband is sharing all his personal things to her wife just imagine how much happy she'll be just imagine she'll think so much respectful i mean she'll think like oh i'm so i'm so worthy my husband thinks me he gives me some significance i'm i'm so my husband is so feels so that i'm important and that's why he's sharing all these things to me just imagine that family life how amazing it will be when a husband who is willing to talk to his wife communicate to his wife about his personal struggles and i'm telling you dear brothers i've seen so many breakups i've seen so many divorces i've seen too many and everything started with a hidden nature trying to hide things ends in heartbreak dear brothers and sisters especially brothers are you hiding anything i plead in the name of jesus please don't hide please don't hide because you know god has kept a helper and a companion for you you don't need to hide it anymore you don't need to struggle alone money things you know openly talk about money openly talk about your habits you know if you have some bad habits go and talk to your wife tell her gently saying i'm struggling with this you know can we please pray about it can you please pray with me can you help me please i'm telling you humility hum, husband with humility is going to be an amazing man in the kingdom of god and then the next point is let her know that you are a partner and one team let her know that you are one team the bible says in matthew chapter uh, 19 you know jesus says that you know that they are no longer are two but they are one flesh they are one they are one flesh and tell her that she is important member in our team you know there's one team and the team performs well when their individuals are operating in the right way and the same thing you know it's not about you know many times you know husband and wife they fight you know like like oh this is my house get out of my house the husband will say and the wife will say you know this is my house and the husband will say no this is my salary oh this is your salary it's like you know that is a place where it's not a team just imagine if husband says it's my salary i am earning the money and you have no part of it that means in his mind he is not operating as a team it's not a partnership it is some he is living like a bachelor she is living like another bachelor no dear brothers and sisters god wants us to be partners and i will see an example today at the end of it you know we'll see an example that you know that 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 thing you know that that how one couple they were so united and they are an example for us we'll look at it a little later and that you know you should tell you should involve your wife to work with you you ask her help for something and she'll be more than happy to do it and say so that she you'll know that build that team spirit you know go out with your wife you know take her to somewhere you know talk to her take her to some place you know where she likes go out to eat you know spend some time and you know don't try to you know struggle alone suffer alone because whatever you're looking for satisfaction outside it could be video game or it could be sports or it could be other women or it could be uh, gadgets or it could be anything do you think it's going to give you satisfaction has it satisfied you has it made you a better man has it made you uh, a stronger person has you has it built you in love has it brought you closer to god no the answer is no 
the only satisfaction we can get is through our wife who god has planned that is god's plan for you dear brother and that's the that's why the topic is you know god's desire for the husband this is god's desire for the husband not your own thinking your own concepts you know don't don't if you have those habits you know if you are hiding away from god's purpose i pray that you know god will touch you this morning that god will speak to you this morning that god will make you into a glorious husband a glorious father that god wants you to be i ask that the holy spirit will come upon you and that this love will come and descend upon your life right now you ask him lord release your love lord release your love into my life i control i'm get angry i hide i fight i get i get irritated lord you show me you ask god and god's going to definitely do it dear brothers and sisters you know we see a mighty god we serve a living god you know we are not joking around here you know we are talking about the real god the creator of heaven and earth and he wants you to have a joyful family life i want you to remember remember that dear husband dear friend dear brother and now we look at a wife god's desire for a wife what is god's desire for a wife and there are a few things that we want to see the first thing is that you appreciate him for his leadership you appreciate him for his leadership you know the god has created man and woman in such a way that the deepest need of a woman is love the deepest need of a man is respect love and respect the woman needs love so god says love your wife the husband needs respect so god says wives submit to your husband and that's the thing and you know you uh, women you know you appreciate your husband because they go through tough life you know they are they are uh, uh, they have a tough job probably and in a country like india you know it's very hard to raise a family it's very hard to provide for the family it's a very stressful thing sometimes salary is not enough we live paycheck to paycheck we live hand to mouth it's very hard and you know appreciate them appreciate them for their leadership thank them i i appreciate you for you know for leading our family for leading us for thinking about us and leading us and you know even your husband could, could could have made small steps but you know you still appreciate them and the next thing is you know encourage him encourage him that he is providing for the family he is protecting the family he is taking efforts you know he be life is so full of uncertainty we live in the time of uncertainty total uncertainty nobody has a secure job anybody can lose a job any time encourage them give them a sense of encouragement you know because when they go to office you know there's politics you know there's backbiting there is things that are harassing them people that are harassing them job is unsure so many things that's going on in their mind you can encourage them encourage them saying you know, i i i i appreciate you you know i encourage you that you know that for your effort to protect us to provide for other family and i want to thank you an encouragement you know will be a great way for the husband to say oh yeah my efforts are being appreciated and that's more very important and then also you know sometimes you know, you know husbands are like you know they they want to uh, improve you know everybody wants to improve everybody wants to improve maybe they are still on the process and you encourage them on the process you know appreciate them thank you that compared to last year you are better compared to last week you are better this year compared to two years ago you are better compared to the beginning of marriage time you are better now i know you are making efforts i want to thank you i want to pray for you i'm going to be praying for you i love you i'm going to be praying for you just tell them openly just tell them you know it's a, such a great encouragement and also another thing is you know being patient with them you know the image you see you know is the the bull that's rushing i always compare man to a bull you know like you know like an untamed bull that's what every man is you know he could be a silent man he could be an introvert he could be extrovert but still man is a bull <laughs> i mean this is my this is my understanding but the thing is you know it's a job of the wife not the job i mean it's it's not a job it's it's just a it's just just you know a role of a wife you know to 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 be patient with her husband to be patient with him how long you might ask me i don't know god's going to give you that patience sister god's going to give you that patience sister god's going to give you that love that long suffering and i know many dear sisters you know who are suffering long for their husbands to change who go to bed with tears in their pillows 
who are crying for love i know god knows i mean more than i know me knowing is nothing but god knows it he kept every tear you know he he knows he's watching and that's the thing dear brothers and sisters especially sisters you know that that you know the bible says in first peter chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 for sisters you go and read it is that you know that you don't try to change them let your gentle spirit change them let your gentleness change them let your love change them let your patience with them change them many wives you know they want to change their husband or they are hoping that their husband will change if they do this tactic or this tactic or this tactic no it will not happen it will not happen dear sisters a godly woman you know you read first peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 4 that you know that she will through her actions through her quiet and gentle spirit that she can change she can bring change how many testimonies how many testimonies i have seen where women have brought change in the husband and that's the thing so if i that ox has to be tamed it has to be through love and patience and then finally ask your husband you know many times you know men they don't say it in their out of their mouth they don't talk about it ask them ask them you know like is there anything that i'm not doing right is there anything that i need to do that i'm not doing is there anything that i'm doing wrongly is there anything about me that irritates you is there anything about me that i have to change i mean it's both husband should also ask their wife and wife also should ask their husband i mean there was this one prayer meeting and me and my wife we went there and the pastor said you know that uh, that you know at the end of the meeting you know go and ask your wife about like you know do you uh, is there anything that i need to change i mean my wife asked quickly and i told few things and i didn't it was very hard for me to ask this was few years ago and then you know uh, i asked is there anything because you know what as men sometimes you know we assume that everything is going fine everything is going fine you know we are buying all the vegetables fruits and meat and fish and everything you know things are fine <laughs> no things are not fine unless you ask so sisters you ask husbands you ask and i'm telling you god's going to create a glorious family life and at last you know i want you to look at this verse in romans chapter 16 verse 3 and 5 3 to 4 there's this couple called prisca and aquila they are co-workers in jesus christ with apostle paul who for my life risk their own necks to whom not only do i give thanks but also the churches of the gentiles also greet the church that is in our house you know so the basically the whole church is thankful to this one couple many churches and including paul they are thanking this couple because they gave almost gave their life for apostle paul not only that they are fellow workers in christ see that unity that's the goal of each husband and wife who follow jesus is that they are united and they are serving god they love god and also what they have a church in their house they also have a church in their house beautiful that is god's plan for you that's god's desire for you that you can both get together you know you're not both are not perfect but you get together and say lord we want to serve you we want to love you we want to love each other lord we thank you that you enable you that you're going to enable us and i'm telling you dear brother and sister don't get discouraged today don't condemn yourself telling you ask for the spirit of god's help ask for the spirit of god's help let him help you let him guide you let him give you his wisdom let him give you his love let him give you his mercy and gentleness and patience and kindness and long suffering everything that you need you have it already you have it through jesus he will release it to you dear husband he will release it to you dear wife he will release it to you you have to ask in faith ask god saying lord teach me gentleness lord teach me to be humble lord teach me to not talk rashly to my wife teach me to love her teach me to touch her teach me to be gentle with her i'm telling you don't you think god's going to answer that prayer i mean first thing he's going to answer that there was this husband and wife and this husband you know he gave a big list to his wife saying <laughs> almost like 10 commandments you know he gave you have to treat me like this you have to do this when you wake up in the morning you have to do this when you go to bed you have to do this when you have to uh, this is how you have to keep the house and big list of things and this is how you have to treat me and all these things big list and he gave this list to the wife and she tried very hard but it is not possible to do everything on the list she used to miss it is very hard she tried but she could not 
one day what happened he the husband met with an accident and he died and the list is also gone so after few years later you know this lady was alone so she got remarried she got married so what happened you know the has the family life was much better you know she was having very good family life and all and then one day she opened her suitcase and then she saw this old list from the first husband this old list from the husband who had passed away and she looked at the list and she is seeing all these uh, things that the husband wanted first husband wanted her to do and in this marriage she is able to do everything without even taking the paper out without even trying to remember and she is like shocked i am able to do everything i totally forgot about the list but i am able to do everything you know why you know why because the husband loved her because this husband did not give a list all he did was i'm going to love you i'm going to love you like jesus loved me i'm going to love you with a passion and automatically what happens the wife you know did more than what's there on the list so that's the thing about grace is that you know that we don't need to put rules we don't need to put lists and all these things god's going to do that and that's the thing about love dear brothers and sisters it's divine it's from god Agape love the self sacrificial love is from god it's not from humans and that's the thing that god wants to give you so i want to tell you dear brother before we close in prayer love your wife love your wife with the same love that jesus loves you do you believe do you believe brother that jesus loves you love her with the same love do you know that jesus loves you with a passionate and an unending love do you know that jesus loves you amazing love that he has for you love the wife the same way love her the same way that god's going to use you use you to be an amazing husband and a great man of god and that's very important so love her with all your heart and to sisters i'm telling you love your husbands also love your husbands also be patient with them pray for them love them in spite of their difficulties love them in spite of their bad habits love them god will let god pour out his patience upon you that the gifts of the holy spirit be upon you let the fruit of the spirit be upon you so that you can love him as christ is also able to love him and also one thing i want to say today is i know i don't know how many of you are watching this has husbands and wives like i told you the first picture was that you know the when you first got married you know you held your hand together so if anybody is watching husband and wife is watching you know i don't want to be weird around your family but i'm not watching but you're watching can you please hold your hand can you please hold your wife's hand wives can you please hold your husband's hand we want to pray to god today you know don't don't stare at each other let's do it you know if you if it's possible you know if you're watching it with your husband if you're watching it with your wife why don't you both hold your hand together and let's ask the spirit of god to come and touch our family come and touch our relationship definitely i'm telling you god wants to you to be like an priska and akila god wants your family to be like that and it is possible through the spirit of god let the spirit of love come upon your home we ask that god's going to do it we're going to pray for each other you know if possible today talk gently to each other talk to each other gentle way if keep all these points you know remember them and you know and 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 tell three good things about your spouse to your husband and wife you would say three good things that you are happy for about your husband to your husband and the husband you say three things that you are thankful for about your wife let's exchange these things you know three things and you see how the relationship goes let's stop looking at the negative let's stop looking at the past let's stop looking at the fights that you had let's look at the things that god wants to do in your family so shall we pray as you hold your hands shall we pray dear heavenly father lord we thank you lord we thank you for who you are lord your whole love lord fills the atmosphere lord we can sense your love we can see your love lord let the divine love be in our family Lord as husband and wife we come before you. Lord there are so many issues Lord so many fears worries Lord that we have. There are so many distractions Lord in our life. There are so many things Lord we are following after the wrong kind of love. We are trying to get satisfaction from the wrong place from the wrong person. Lord we come before you. 
Lord, we humbly come before you. Lord, help us to listen to each other. Help us to love each other. Help us to speak to each other. Holy Spirit, you come and touch every dear brother and sister who is watching right now. Holy Spirit, you come, Lord. You come, them, come Lord, and, and give them this abundant marriage life that you have planned for them when you brought them together. Lord, whatever the purpose you have for them, when they came together, Lord, let it be fulfilled, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are a God of miracles. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who heals our hearts. Lord, any broken hearts, anybody who is alone, watching alone, Lord, husband who is watching it alone, a wife who is watching it alone, I pray, Lord, that you bring them together. Lord, break the stronghold of the enemy. Lord, you bring them back, Lord. I know you can do it. I know you will do it. Lord, you bring healing upon that relationship, healing upon that heart. Lord, take away all bad habits. Break those bad habits. If there is anything, Lord, that's hidden, the way that the husband is hiding or the wife is hiding something, Lord, we ask, Lord, let them come before you transparently and openly, Lord. Let them repent, Lord, and confess and come before you. We thank you. Bless this relationship. Bless each dear brother and sister. Anoint them, especially also I pray for, Lord, future husbands and wives. Lord, they are filled with anxiety about who will come, who should I get married, when should I get married. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you touch them. Anoint them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Let them be prepared. Let their hearts be ready, Lord, so when the marriage happens, Lord, that they can glorify you and honor you with all their life. We thank you. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.